Aloha from Hawaii. Keith Green was such a friend, a dear partner, a powerful communicator. And I had the privilege, the last three times he ever ministered publicly, I was able to share that time with him. He would sing and uh, with all the exuberance that only Keith could do. And his messages were always powerful. And we were believing God for a release of, um, of young people that would be joining into mission service. And uh, so it, it was an open air event up in Northern California and many thousands were there. And then we came to San Fernando Valley in Southern California, had some kind of a horse racing place where they had a stadium and all, and we ministered there. What we didn't know was there, there was a professional photography team and they actually took the whole thing and recorded it, videoed it. But the final night was in Long Beach City Auditorium. We had 5,000, I think it was there, and the place was packed and more would like to have come. After that, Darlene and I went with Melody and Keith up near Ventura, where they had rented a cabin. And we had a night together there and then a day of prayer. So after we all woke up in our bedrooms and went out and had this time together, it's one that I will always remember all the rest of my life. And we prayed for 100,000 young people to be released into short-term missions and we believe that God would do it. And I can still see Keith laying out on the floor, pounding the floor, asking for a hundred thousand young people to be released into missions. And again, Keith never did anything by half heart. He would give his all and that was happening in the prayer meeting. And, and after we had been praying for a time, we began to talk about, well, let's continue what we've been doing because the way Keith would do, he would give his powerful ministry from the piano. Then he would stand and introduce me and I would start preaching and call, giving the altar call. And so he said, we need to, we need to do this only let's do it starting in, at the Kingdom in Seattle. And we'll come down then to Portland, down to, and then we begin to map it out into the U.S. Well, I went from that prayer meeting, I went out to Japan and I was speaking in Okinawa uh, a few days later, uh, maybe two weeks, I don't, I've forgotten exactly. And I was pre preaching open air at a, like a park arrangement and uh, evangelistic and when I stepped off of the stage and went to the back uh, they said oh you have this phone call and it's about Keith Green and I thought what is this and when I got the message he had just been killed in a plane crash and just very little information, but I, all I could hear was the verse, except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. And I heard that over and over in my spirit and into my mind. And, uh, and so a few weeks later, Melody called me and she said, we've been praying because someone gave us the, all the footage of the next to last meeting, the outdoor meeting there in San Fernando Valley from the professional film team. 
And they said, we think God wants you to have it and you're, you're to use it. And Melody said to me, he says, we think that God wants us to do what we prayed about. Only now we will do it as a memorial tour for, Gre uh, for Keith. And uh, we'll start at the King Dome. Well, we went up to Seattle and they'd done the preparation as they always did so well. And young people were coming by the busloads and they filled up every seat at the King Dome. And they started to turn away buses and one man stopped them. He turned out he was the commissioner for all the fire departments in the greater Seattle area. He said, I don't want any young person to miss this. And so he called on his firemen to come and for seating them in every aisle on the stairs and then let the young people come and fill every inch of the King Dome. There was no walkways. There were nothing. And he, it was the largest crowd they had ever had in the King Dome because they had never done that before. But that night it was full. And so on the great big screen, and that was a big deal back then, they had made sure it was the biggest screen possible. Keith was playing the piano and singing his heart out. And at the end of his time, 30 minutes or more, he stood at the piano and started introducing me and I, I walked up and we hugged and I turned and then they cut the film above me and I turned and looked into the audience which the lights hit me and I couldn't see anything of course it's dark and, but I just all I could see is lights but I started preaching. It was a, quite a night as we saw so many begin to pray and consider and become a part of the great mission thrust. We went from there and followed through and in fact did go to 250 cities in America. I didn't go to all of them. I'd, I'd put <laughs> some of our other speakers in my place at times, but, but uh, we went all over filling auditoriums, filling exposition halls and all of the rest. And then it was taken worldwide. Far more than 100,000 began to sh join short term. And short termers make a lot of long term missionaries. And so with that, Keith had, would often say to me, Lauren, I think I need to join YWAM. And I said, no, we work together showing the unity because you have this special calling here and, and we will be everything you want and we'll take care of what you need to have taken care of. So we offered that, of course, two last days ministries after he was taken and Melody was with us for a while and others. But the, the friendship that we had was really special in God. It was a calling of God. And it was really a, a beautiful relationship, but it was around the whole area of world mission. He had gone to be with one of our ships, our first ship actually, and uh, it's called the Anastasis in Greece. And he'd caught the vision of the ship. And, and he was so, so desiring of seeing the Great Commission fulfilled. And if you want to really honor him at this anniversary time, honor his heart, which was get the gospel to everyone in the world and make sure they get a Bible, make sure they get discipled and, and that from everywhere in the world to everywhere in the world which was a vision God gave to me of waves of young people going. 
And it meant literally from all language groups, all tribal groups, all ethnicities, and all na nations to go to, again, the alls, because the alls and the everys are a part of the Great Commission. And his strength of spirit and his message of song that would hit the hearts of people by the millions. It is still going on in many parts of the world today. They use the Keith Green song and they are still recruiting missionaries into the harvest fields of the world. I loved not only Keith, but also a melody and I love their ministry, but there's something special about this man that we are honoring at this time that I know that God is going to pass on some words of encouragement to Keith Green there with Jesus in heaven. God bless you.